Hi, everybody. My name is John DiPietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Camper Report Show. And on this Camper Report Show, Bob, I am going to introduce our audience to a really cool way to camp. It's the Winnebago Adventure Wagon, and you can go to work in it during the day, spend a few minutes changing things around and go camping with it that night. It's pretty cool. Sounds great. And uh, <laughs> I've got an interview with Anthony Kapoor, the CEO of Cortez Camper a new camping company building a double hulled fiberglass trailer. Will you see what they've done? Double hulled, does, does this float too? No, it doesn't, but it's no. using a lot of the nautical uh, engineering, let's put it that way. Okay, those stories plus all the news of the week that we get whereabouts? At RV Business and Woodall's Campground Magazine. And we'll be back with that right after this. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. My name is John DiPietro, and this is the news section of the Camper Report Show. His name is Bob Zagami, sitting right next to me. Actually, through the magic of video, he is, but I'm in Massachusetts. He's in Florida, but you know what? Mentally, both of us are camping right now because camping season's here, Bob. And you know what? There's some new stories that are coming out, new statistics about the, the popularity of national parks and which ones are the big ones. Talk about that, would you? This, this is a very interesting study by a company called Casino Bonus CA, which I assume <laughs> made in California. But it rates the national parks quite differently. It's on kind of the usability of the people who visit the park, the attractions, the views, and what have you. And I'm just going to give you the top five because they're not what you would expect them to be. You know, whenever we talk about national parks, they talk about uh, Yellowstone and Great Smoky Mountains and Acadia, yep. whatever. The very top of the list is New River Gorge, New River Gorge National Park and Preserve in West Virginia. Second was Car Carlsbad Caverns National Park in New Mexico. Third went to Lewis and Clark National Historic Park in Oregon. Acadia in Maine was fourth. And fifth went to Gates of the Arctic National Park and Preserve in Alaska. Alaska. No. The Yellowstone on this list and the way that they they you know surveyed everybody and, and the top rating was very good based on amenities and uh, things to do. Yellowstone was number 39. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. You know, probably people have think that well, Yellowstone is so hard to get into. Why should I even try? But yeah. Nevertheless, you know, either that or they go there and it's so crowded they can't really get around to see all the other things because where are they going to go? If they go to Yellowstone, they're going to go to the geyser. So, yeah, yeah. 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 that probably Which is what it. we did. It's an interesting did. list. If people are thinking of going to national parks this year, this is a very interesting list to uh, review. Yep, exactly. And you know what? I saw one other, I'm going to throw this bonus story in here. I saw another story that next year in 2024, somewhere in Illinois, there's going to be an eclipse. That's right. viewable only in the center of the country. And those campgrounds in that area are already filling up, which filled, is amazing. Filled up for 2024. Yep. yep. And speaking of campgrounds filling up, one of our friends, friendly people that we know at the Jellystone campgrounds are reporting a very good year last year, up what, 12%? 12, up 12.2%. And that's uh, new uh, campgrounds in their network and their existing ones in the network. What's more important, this is the 16th consecutive year of increasing revenues with the Jellystone Park. And yeah. part of that is their dedication to families. They are known as the premier family campground and the amenities that each of the parks have. And I just saw another notice the other day, 35 of the parks are putting new amenities in or improving existing amenities. So they're, they're not standing still. And uh, they're growing no. quite, quite nicely. No, we stayed at one um, a year or so. Yeah, just last year down in Virginia that was run by our friends at Blue Water that was a Jellystone Park that it's had its own water park, its own water park that, you know, people from the outdoors, outdoors, from the outside the park could come and use. But that is the level of amenities that parks are building now to yep. um, that's true. And and they did build nine new parks last year. Maine, Michigan, Illinois, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Texas, and Virginia. 
yeah. and others are making new uh, improvements, as we said. So best of luck to the Jellystone, Yogi Bear Jellystone Park yep. Camp Resort. Uh, certainly an iconic name in camping, as well as an iconic name in campers is the Bounder. And they have just rolled their 40,000th, that's four zero 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 units off the assembly line. And um, our friends at General RV told us about that. Right. Gen General RV, RV was the recipient of the Bounder 35K uh, unit. What's interesting this is the best-selling Class A motorhome in history in the RV industry, and it was introduced in 1985. So this is the 38th year yep. of the Bounder brand name. You know, lots of times companies come and go and brand names come and go or the name's popular for five years, and then they take it away for five years, and then they bring it back for five years. But for 38 straight years, there has been a Bounder Class A motorhome. And if you want to see the very special 40,000th one, you have to go to General RV in Decatur. No, they're not in Decatur, Illinois. I'm not sure which office has it, actually. Well, that was probably their headquarters that sent that out. Yeah, that's Decatur. Yep. Bounder is one of those brands that came out with both a diesel and a gas model simultaneously, just like Winnebago did with the Adventurer. They had a gas and a diesel. Now the industry, if there's a certain name on it, it's either going to be a diesel or gas, but right. usually you don't see it offered in both in both varieties. It's, so. it's only a gas model. You're right. Yep, exactly. And, um, you know, talk about RVing, National Go RVing Day. Well, for me, it was last weekend, okay, when we got the RV out for the first time. That's always the most exciting time of the year. But this is the time when the East Coast people and the Northern people get to uh, – use your RVs, uh, talk about what National Go RVing Day is. This is an industry effort supported by activity with the uh, campgrounds and RV dealerships. And the RVIA and the Go RVing committees have an actual uh, National Go RVing toolkit that is available to all of our RV dealers and the campgrounds. And it's to encourage people to get outside and enjoy the great outdoors and go someplace in their RV. It's always the second Saturday in June. For this year, it'll be June 10th. But uh, it also happens to be taking place during June, which, of course, is National Camping Month and Great Outdoors Month. So it's kind of like the kicking off. They get past Memorial Day. Everybody gets everything set up. But in June, you really go into cool. full gear. You know, get and, uh, take your, your summer and all your camping adventures and run with it. So it's a... a a nice program. Uh, it's a relatively new program, but you're going to see a lot of publicity and we're hoping all of our dealers get the toolkit and promote it at the dealership, promote people taking their RV and going someplace with it on that weekend and the campgrounds encouraging people to take their RV and come to their particular campground and embrace the RVing experience. All right. Exactly. exactly. That's great. And yep. uh, we want to thank our friends at RV Business and Woodalls for feeding this information to us. They do all the hard work. We're just the pretty faces in this whole thing. That's but right. um, the, the reality is, is we are prettier faces than Kessler and Quiggle. There's no question. There. That's why we're here. Right. Okay. That, that's why we're here. And so not we've right. got a great show set for you. Stay with us because this, Mr. Zagami, is what? The Camper Report Show. Mike here from RV Blogger. Don't waste hundreds of dollars on an external GPS for your RV. All you need to do is download the RV Life app right onto your phone. This app is so cool. It has RV GPS built right into it. So you can load all the specific measurements and weights for your RV. It'll give you directions safe for your RV to follow. And by the way, if you have RV Trip Wizard, directions for your trips upload into this GPS automatically. Back at the Camper Report Show, and here's something really new that you're going to like, the Adventure Wagon. And I hope I don't see any people that I know here. Oh, no. It's hey, the, everybody. It's the Petro. It's John no. Petro. Now the real interview can begin because we are in Tampa, Florida. We're at the Florida RV Show. We're at the Winnebago booth, and we were just talking with our friends from Winnebago who said, before you leave... You've got to see the Adventure Wagon, and we are with Mr. Adventure Wagon himself, Brad, 
from, you guys are out west somewhere, right? Yeah, we're outside of Portland, Oregon. Okay, so that's about as west you can get. So, what it all boils down to is, you've got a product here that's very unique. Who is your, well, put it, well, let's let's start. You've got a Mercedes, a Mercedes Sprinter chassis, 3500. Mm -hmm. Yep. And when you get it, it's pretty much empty. And yep. empty you, cargo van. You put it together. Who buys these? Um, How old are they? And tell us what you do. They are 20 to 80 years in age. And the one thing that they have in so common. You have, a, you have a specific target market. Yes, then. 20 very, very to target. 80. Okay, yep. very target. Um, it is really ideal for someone that wants to use their van for multiple purposes um, to get out and, and do things that uh, you know a van can let them do that a big RV won't. Uh, it's uh, a gear hauler. It's for guys putting bikes and surfboards and skis in the back. It's also for uh, a work play van for the contractor that wants to load it with tools during the week uh, and maybe go, you know, then go on the weekend and go camping with the family. Um, the big thing for us is the configurability and the modularity. Um, if you look at the van, we've got a series of tracks along the wall and on the floors, which allows you to move the components around based on how your need is. You can take the galley cabinet out, you can take the seats out, you can put six seats in, you can put two beds in, one bed, no bed. You okay, can have different Brad, I gotta stop. Mm -hmm. You told me that you were the, the person that's the handyman, the, the plumber, electrician. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you want to convert it. Yep. That's gonna take days or hours to do. It takes five minutes to take the bed out. It takes three or four minutes to take a chair out. The cabinets are bolted down for safety. It might take you 10 or 15 minutes to take those out. So you're telling me on a Friday afternoon, Joe, the, the uh, I say Joe, but it could be Phil, it could be Tom, but the carpenter mm -hmm. can unload his gear mm -hmm. and put the fishing poles in, yep. maybe put uh, you know a couple bikes or mm -hmm. mountain climbing gear mm -hmm. and be on his way. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's pretty amazing. I have a contractor in Minnesota that brings his mountain bike on every job and works, goes for a ride, then lays down in the bed and takes a nap. Okay, so these are not necessarily for campground people. They absolutely could be for campground people. But the people that you see using them now, you said you've been in business for several years, mm -hmm. and have several of these on the road. Yep. Um, the partnership with Winnebago is really interesting because it gives you a platform with a 60-year-old company that's right. nationally recognized as right. the flagship. Yep. Um, Four-wheel drive vehicle? This one's four-wheel drive. They're also available in two-wheel drive, shorter wheelbase, at least through our company. Yeah. Um, Winnebago right now just has the long wheelbase 170 Sprinter, but we also offer the systems for transits um, and different sizes of both the transit and the Sprinter. Okay. And if people go to the Winnebago website, they can find out more? I believe Winnebago is getting it up on their website. It's a product exclusively for Winnebago to sell um, as a fully built-out van. Uh, another advantage of going through the dealership is the ability to get RV financing. Uh -huh. Stretch it out, yep. lower yep. monthly payments, right. et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, we just want to thank you so much for uh, taking time. I see that your booth is always very busy. we able to carve out a minute with you. Yeah. And thank you so much. Thank you. And this is the Camp Report Show. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Camper Report Show. Great guest today, Anthony Capora with Cortez Campers. And uh, Anthony, I'm excited to hear about the company because you're a new player in the RV industry, but you're a very experienced business. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've got with Cortez. Excellent. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, U.S. Lighting Group, uh, the company went public in 2016 moved into a couple spaces, into the lighting business and to the electronics business. And that's where I started to come on board uh, through the later years of that. And uh, lo and behold, you know, once, once you know, you're a public company and, and you want to, you, know, uh, you know, exceed and excel, you know, obviously you don't want any ceilings to your revenue. So the electronics company was doing quite well. However, obviously felt that, you know, it was at its uh, later stages of growth. Uh, and then obviously the executive team decided to sell off that company and move into another space. 
uh, hence came the creation of uh, Cortez Campers. So uh, they sold that off and that funded the R&D and development. So that started about four years ago. That's when I came, came aboard. Um, I moved into the C CEO position. Uh, I, I was on the forefront of developing, you know, the, the prototype and the first 17 footer. Um, it's actually quite different than what you see today. So it had, has had a couple revisions. Um, and again, it's been doing exceptionally well. You know, we dove into, you know, what we were really looking for to, to really um, brand Cortez. And that was to bring, you know, the just innovation to the industry, build a quality of, of high, a high value product to consumers. You know, we want to up the ante with quality and, and, and making consumers feel like they're getting something that's going to last a lifetime. Yep. And the only way you'll, you'll sell a Cortez is, is to get the bigger, bigger one. Well, uh, your, your secret to success is that it's fiberglass. So explain the importance of why you went with fiberglass when designing the product. Yes. So one of the, obviously, number one, our core competency with our engineer and staff here revolves around fiberglass. We have decades of experience. The lead engineer was a boat builder by trade. So the thought was, let's build a camper similar to a boat, or you could even say an airplane today. You know, again, the bulk of RVs, we all know they're built, uh, you know, obviously we call the stick and tins quite different than how we're building campers. So we decided not only can you, you know, be successful with having a very strong, rigid product, but you can use, you know, more expensive materials because you're saving on the labor. You don't need a bunch of guys putting a camper together in molded fiberglass. So we've actually turned the tables of cheaper materials and high labor versus expensive materials and saving on the labor. So that's where molded fiberglass comes into play. And we took it a step farther to say, we're gonna use the best materials such as Poland 944 gel coat. It's marine grade gel coat. It's UV resistant, it's the most durable and will give you the longest uh, cosmetic shine. And it's, it's basically indestructible. Anything that could be capable for the water is gonna definitely be good enough to just sit in the sun because boats do that as it is. Well, you know, then, what's interesting is the, the vibrant colors that you have. And I'm, I'm not an engineer and I'm not mechanical, but I, but I know in reading your information, the color goes all, all the way through the fiberglass. It's not so a the, point. Yeah, so actually the gel, it's called gel coat. So the gel coat that you get as actually has pigment in it, which gives you the color. And that is the outer skin of the camper. So we lay 18 to 20 mils of that gel coat. And obviously that serves as the outer skin. And then fiberglass is laid up then after in the mold. And obviously the mold uh, having one top piece, one bottom piece, one inner top piece and one bottom inner top piece gives you the four main parts to build our camper. So we say we have a doubled hauled camper, meaning there's fiberglass on the outside skin and on the inside skin, pretty on both sides. So yeah. obviously if you look at you know molded fiberglass, there are pretty much two companies that have only a single hull design, two companies with a double hull design. And a big takeaway from what we're doing is we are again embarking on this with a dealer network so typically in molded fiberglass they deal direct out of the factory they have you know an extremely successful company you know but again they're pretty much in texas tennessee and minnesota so we decided let's have a dealer network and then this way you know rv dealers can complement their lineups because technically you know uh what we're doing and what you get out of Elkhart, it's two different markets, two different well, Yeah, markets. And, and they're not going to have anything like it on the lot. Exactly. Uh, what about the dealer selection process? Because it's not inexpensive and you can get into that, but it's, it's the value versus what they may be used to selling. So how important sure. was it for you to take your time in selecting dealers that are going to be in the network? Absolutely. That is probably you come up with the product and I could explain a little bit more of what we bring to the table, why our product is what it is, but also 
developing the strategic dealer network. And again, not everybody can serve as a good dealer for Cortez. So we're very strategic. Um, we're very methodical. You know, we look at, you know, the, the needle movers in the industry who are selling that higher price product, but moves good products. So we have a great sales team. So we're very strategic. We have about 30 dealers right now across the United States. And again, we want to make, you know, make sure we're having the, the the partnerships, but also respecting territory, make sure we're not fighting over pricing and competing against each other. So uh, we have a great team. And like I say, we, we, we are finding those, those key players for us and it's been great. Well, I, I think one of the things that's important, I'm sure in the development of your strategy is that when you build a product the way that you've built it, that is so unique, uh, it's all, it, it'll become an iconic product. And, and the fact of the matter is when people look at pricing and it's the RV industry and consumers mm -hmm. are guilty of it too. They always want the lowest price, mm -hmm. but the construction is so different. The quality is so different that although it may cost two or three times what people think they should pay for a trailer, this product is going, and I'm not a salesman by it, but this product, because of the engineering, because of the manufacturing process, mm -hmm. it's going to last 50, 60, 60. It's, you could potentially buy two or three or four other trailers over the lifetime of a Cortez. Am I wrong in looking at it that way? You're absolutely correct. And not only that, you don't, you don't have to get your engineering degree buying a Cortez camper. That's one of the things we say a lot, but you're absolutely right. Plus the resale on a Cortez, you know, say you want to get the next model or, you know, you just like to get a new camper every few years. Basically, you know, the, the used sale is going to be a lot higher than typically what you get in the industry. So there is a lot of benefits. And yes, you get a benefit of a, a product that is going to last. One of the big takeaways of what we do is we have zero wood in our construction. The only piece of wood in our camper is the cutting board. So we use marine grade gel coat, we yeah. use fiberglass, we use polypropylene honeycomb core, which is extremely, extremely light and strong. We are double hauled. So the insulation, our value is high. You know, fiberglass does not conduct heat or cold very well. So we have a tr true four season camper. And again, we pay attention to every little detail. We go 100% stainless on all our bolts and fasteners. We don't want nothing to rust, corrode, mold, rot, decay, or get eaten by bugs. You know, we want something that's going to last a lifetime, you know, and, and we pay attention to detail. We build them as though we're building them for ourselves. Well, you know, one of the, I was watching one of your videos the other day, one of the things that I was intrigued with is because you have the fiberglass outside and the fiberglass inside, you literally, and I saw it, you know, in the video, you, you could just wash off, you could hose the inside of the unit, you get a drain plug on the bottom like a boat and yep. wash the whole thing out. And and by the way, you got a kitchen, a bathroom, and a bedroom. This is a full size tra full size trailer. Absolutely. Yep. It, you won't hurt it. So just yeah, raise up the front, the front tongue, and you could hose off the camper and then just drain the water in the back. Absolutely. And we, you know, we now have adjusted our pricing accordingly. We, we actually outfitted the camper now so that we can um, basically make a complete set of options. So now we're actually working now with our dealers a little bit more on price point because not everybody wants a furnace or not everybody wants, you know, the eight cubic foot fridge. So now we're coming out with options to obviously diversify, you know, our consumer our consumer sales for our dealers. So we are doing things to say, we can give you the fully loaded and then we could step back a little bit here and, and go with an options to, to reduce the cost. So that has also been beneficial. How, how are you doing on, on production? The, the units <laughs> being very well received. So are you able to meet market demands at this point in time? Yeah, so we've been uh, becoming, you know, just like anything, learning something new. Uh, we have right now a pulse of just tremendous employees, decades of lamination. You know, our final assembly guys are marine techs, they're, you know, RV guys, they, you know, auto mechanics. So we, we have training. It's been coming together so perfectly. So our efficiency has been getting uh, to where we need it to be. So we could grow and scale. We have people chopping at the bit to get here. 
you know, with our, our employees recruiting their, their uh, network of people. So yeah, growing and scaling. Um, and again, in molded fiberglass, you know, producing uh, more parts becomes relatively easy because it's not as labor intense. So yes, we can meet the demand. Uh, we're on our way to create a new model for our 17 foot. We're, you know, aggressively doing a 22 and we just keep uh, every month continuing to put out more product. And these are manufactured here in the States? Yep, right here in Euclid, Ohio. Right in Ohio. All right. They could say okay. some of the best camper companies are created in Ohio. You know, that's hopefully that's right. Ohio will be making a name for themselves with the other. There's a couple other big ones out there. It's not bad being in the same state as Airstream. Yeah, it's. You got it. Said, you develop your own iconic brand. You let them have the aluminum and you got the fiberglass. You got it. And if you think about it, we almost have the same story. You know, they made it by building campers like airplanes, you know, and we can argue the same point. We're building campers like airplanes. And and, so, and to that point also, you know, give us your suggested MSRP, but I know it's very close to an Airstream Bambi or the smaller Airstream. So it's right in that whole approach. And their approach is the same in terms of longevity and uh, lasting many years and, and the fact that customers will have it for a very long time and the resale value is it. That's, that's, that's not a bad model to follow. No, it's not it's a bad model. <laughs> yep. Yeah. There's some people out there, you get what you pay for, you know, and, and, you know, we may not be your first camper, you know, if you're a, a new, new RV or maybe you're not starting with a Cortez, but we get a lot of those people, you know, turning in their campers and, and coming to us. So, you know, it's been great. And, you know, the feedback we've been getting, we have a, an owner's group now. Um, again, you can see what they're doing to the insides to customize them. And as I would say, the girls call it cuting it up a little bit, you know, because obviously it's very durable, but when you add some knickknacks in there, it, it looks very homely, inviting. Uh, and we've been getting the great feedback from our, from our, our, our owners group and they, they just are excited because again okay. people don't know what this is they go oh my god what's that camper we, we saw that in in new england this year we got you know pete's rv is one of your dealers up here in in the northeast and uh man it, every show he went to he had that out there and as soon as they walked into the display they, they went for just that reason what what is this what yeah. what is this thing here you know you know what the, the value added to that we bring is the color options, you know, typically oh, yeah. in older fiberglass, there's only one color white. So, and a happier camper has some, has, has some color options, but we, you know, are, 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 you know, really creative and our, our colors look great. People love them. So. Well, I, I, I suspect that uh, Janine Pettit and the girl camper organization, have you had any discussions with Janine? Uh, not yet. So, and, and we'll have to introduce you. I bet the girl campers would really take to the Cortez campers. We're, yeah. we're getting short on time, Anthony. I could talk to you for a couple of hours on this because I think. Oh, me too. And Bob, anybody who wants dealer app wants a dealer application, you know, send them my way, please. Send them to <laughs> Brian Andrews. He's our salesman. You could call him at uh, 440-281-3739. Uh, we would love to, you know, to work with anybody that's interested in, in signing up with us. And for the consumers, the website is? Uh, CortezCampers.com. Uh, so obviously there is a, is, there's links to our dealer network. Um, you can call the shop for, you know, for any questions. You could talk to our team. Uh, we've been doing shop tours, uh, especially dealers, dealers to be, consumers that are just driving past. So again, we love to show our factory and 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 what innovation we're bringing bringing to the industry. All right, uh, we've had Anthony Capora with Cortez Campers. Delightful to uh, get a chance to talk about the early success, and I'm sure it's going to be continued and ongoing. So thank you very much for joining us on the Camper Report Show, and we will spice it up with some URLs down below and some photos of the products and the the videos to overlay on this great conversation. Anthony, thank you very much. Bob, thank you. And if you're ever in Cleveland, you better stop by and come see us. I'm gonna find a I'm gonna find a reason to get out there. But thank you very much. Thank you. Bye now. Okay. Bye bye.